Hey, it's been a while. I haven't sat down in front of a camera and talked to it in about four weeks now, so I feel kind of anxious making this video, but there's really no reason for me to feel that way. It's just I'm not used to sitting in front of the camera um, because it's been a while and I haven't uploaded in about three weeks now, I want to say, and that's the, the longest I've gone without uploading a video. A lot of YouTubers are scared to take breaks because of how unpredictable the algorithm is and it's good to keep consistency when you're uploading and if you just disappear for a while, it can be really bad for you, but sometimes you need to take a break. My mental health really needed a break. It actually was really, really hard for me to even take a break this long because the first week I literally was just anxious and didn't know how to relax because I constantly just was like, I can't just be sitting here doing nothing. I need to be doing something. And then when I would scroll on like TikTok or Instagram, my brain still was working. My brain was still going, find new ideas for different content. Um, what are the trends? Things like that. I just couldn't like not do work. So the first week was really hard for me. It did get a little bit easier. Um, and I did take up playing Planet Zoo. Speaking of, you're probably wondering why am I sitting in my saucer chair? It's because my boyfriend is slowly moving in and he's stolen my desk chair or not stolen. I let him have it because I haven't been working at my desk. Um, so I put the saucer chair here so that if I did need to use my desk, I could just sit in this tiny chair. I also want a new desk chair, but that's, that's off topic but he has a desk area over here now beside mine. I'll show you that. So he has a PC. I'm not a PC gal. I'm an Apple girl until I die. But PC does have games that I can't get on Mac. So Planet Zoo has been one of my addictions that I've taken up in that time. A lot of people have been asking how is Cleo doing, rightfully so. Since Lola's passing, she actually hasn't really shown any signs of being lonely or depressed. Obviously, I can't speak to her, but in her behaviors, she's not really acting like that. She is coming out every morning and afternoon to come into the living room with me and she hangs out with me for as long as she wants until she goes back into her room. She does her binkies and zoomies and she'll jump on the couch and hang out with me. So she's been doing pretty good. With that being said, yes, I still am planning to get her a friend because I believe rabbits are social animals so they should be with a pair or more. Now this is a process when it comes to rabbits. You can't just pick any rabbit and put them together. It is a long process and it's why a lot of people sometimes give up because not every rabbit is compatible with your rabbit. Rabbits are like humans. Like I couldn't just marry anybody because they might not be compatible for me and that's basically the same thing for rabbits. So you have to go ahead and find one that is compatible and it can be difficult because you don't want to adopt a rabbit and then if they both don't end up liking each other, then you have to have two areas for two rabbits. So I'm trying to find a place that is going to allow me to kind of do like bunny dating or foster to adopt where I can try and see if they're compatible. If not, then they can go back to the rescue um, until we can find Cleo a compatible friend. I've said compatible a lot of times now. <laughs> I also haven't bonded in literally like almost seven years now. So that's a long time. And sometimes bu bunny bonding can be stressful. And I have already been spiraling and stressed out with other things that I'll talk about in a minute. So it's just kind of been on hold right now. And I did take a little bit of a look at rabbits at rescues and they're just aren't that many. There's a couple that are already bonded pairs. And obviously I don't have room for three rabbits. So... <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> now on to the other things that have recently happened. So forgive me, I don't remember what exact days these things happened on. Everything has kind of just like meld into one in my brain. And it just feels like everything bad that could possibly happen just happened on the same day. Um, and I also have been spir spiraling throughout this <laughs> past couple of weeks. So 
Either a week or two ago, I walked into the pet room and Nickel was awake. And so I went to go say hi to him and he did his little meerkat thing and I noticed at his genitals, it was red. And so I thought it was blood at first and I was like, oh my gosh, does he have a UTI? Like what happened? And then I looked closer and it was his penis. Um, for any of you have, who have followed me for a long time, you might remember my past hamster, Lenny. He actually had this condition. It's called param paramorphous paramoise <laughs> i'm not even gonna bother i'll just put it on screen but he essentially had that for his entire time living with me and he lived a happy healthy life with the exception he just couldn't have a sand bath because it would irritate it so when i did notice it at first i was like okay let's not freak out immediately maybe let's give it a little time to see if it retracts back in because maybe he just had it out maybe he was excited i don't know um of course it didn't retract back in so i was like okay we need to make a vet appointment and at the time penny also he had previously been treated for demodex mites with ivermectin and it seemed to had work and then he started losing hair again. The hair on his face was thinning a lot and he was losing quite a bit on his neck. So I was like, let's bring both the hamsters in. It's a double whammy. Just get it over with, get both of them treated. So I called the vets. They couldn't get me in that day, but they could get me in the next day at 3.20. Bear in mind, I also haven't had a car for three weeks because mine has been in the auto body shop and I don't live anywhere that has like free transportation or like even transportation that I could pay for. I had to rely on my boyfriend to drive me anywhere, which I hated because I just don't like relying on people like that. So I managed to get an appointment at 320 the next day. And so when I went to go get the hamsters into their carriers, I went to get nickel and I lifted his hideout and he had like squinted eyes. He was shaking and he was very cold. So I like I picked him up and I held him and I was like about to be in tears. I was like, I think he's going to die. Like, I don't know what's happening. Keep in mind, my house was actually warmer than average. So it wouldn't be torpor, which is what the signs he was showing was. So it was very, very weird. Anyways, we got in the car. We're like, let's go to the vet as fast as possible. We get to the vet's. The vet that I got was one I had seen in the past with the rabbits, and it wasn't really my favorite vet, but it's besides the point. Um, so the first hamster he looked at was Nickel, and he did not seem concerned at all in his condition, which is crazy to me because he was shaking, pretty lethargic, like was cold, just didn't seem like he was going to even live past that day, and he kept on telling me the prices of things. He was like, well, because he's so small, we can't really do this. We could do an x-ray, but that's going to cost $200. Um, we can, you know, do this, but that's going to cost this much. And it was really annoying because I don't like, usually my vets don't tell me the prices of things unless I ask for it. And I also don't mind hearing the prices of things. It's understandable to tell somebody it. But it was almost seeming like he was trying to be like, you know, it's going to cost this much and a hamster costs this much, which he pretty much did say that. He was like, you know, these guys, it co they cost this much and how much do you want to spend to do that? And I was just like, you're really going to tell me this. So it was just like really upsetting. And he gave me the option. He was like, okay, well, we could um, take him back, sedate him and push it back in. I, I was like, okay, like, let's do that. And it almost seemed like he didn't want me to do that because immediately he was like, well, you know, there's like risks with sedation and blah, 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 blah. So then I just felt like, okay, if you don't want to do that, like, I just felt pressured to not do that option. And at that point, honestly, I didn't feel comfortable with that vet even doing anything on nickel because if... <laughs> if you like I don't know he also kept asking if the hamsters had diarrhea which is fair or if they had regurgitated hamsters can't regurgitate hamsters can't physically throw up you're an exotic vet you should know that very basic thing so essentially we just went home with antibiotics and pain medication then he looked over penny 
Penny is very high energy, so it is very hard to, like, do an exam on him. But, you know, at some point, like, you don't necessarily need to get his heart rate, which he was trying to get his heart rate so bad and was just, like, kept doing it over and over. And I was just, like, in my head, like, oh, my gosh. It was, everything was just so stressful and I felt so bad. And in the end, he didn't even, like, give me any really solutions for Penny I just was so incredibly frustrated because I see exotic vets all over the world treat hamsters and they treat them so good and they like will actually do things. Meanwhile, I have a vet that is telling me we can't do this because they're too small. You know, they're too small. I can't do this. It's too hard to do that. Like, so I was like, okay, can you just give me a different mite solution for us to try? Because I have heard that, you know, trying different ones sometimes can help because mites can be hard to treat. So he went ahead and just gave me a prescription for a revolution to put on Penny. And I went home um, and the vet visit was like $200. And it was just so soul crushing because it was like, I got no answers. Instead, I got told that like, oh, hamsters are too small to do anything on and that they're really just not worth it to spend the money on. So I was really upset when I got home and I just felt like it was hopeless. So for Penny, I went ahead and treated him with the revolution um, and I did clean out and replace his bedding. And then for Nickel, I was giving him the medications for five days. Obviously, they just didn't work and Nickel still still has paramorphous or whatever you call it. Um, for Penny, I kind of did maybe spiral a little bit too much. And at one point, it, I think it was like three days after I gave him the revolution, I was like, oh my gosh, I believe he has cancer. Maybe that was me spiraling. Probably was. Um, sometimes I can be a little bit dramatic. And I like, when I get into that mind space of just like everything's negative and sad, and I'm just like, and to be fair, he does look very, like, he's only, like, 10 months old, so he should not look the way he does. His coat should be nice and beautiful and full, and it's just not, and his face has been thinning, and I have got no answers. I know that it could be possibly Cushing's disease, and it also could, yes, potentially be cancer, because cancer is a very common thing in hamsters. So it's been... A couple of days since my brain was like, oh my gosh, he has cancer. And since then, I have looked at him and it does look like his hair is kind of growing back more. So maybe was I being overdramatic when I said that? Maybe. So to come to a conclusion with this story, I have been going back and forth with myself if I should try to find a second opinion, which I have tried to look at other exotic vets. And you know what? It's so hopeless because every single website just says, we treat exotic pets like hamsters, gerbils, rats. That little sentence is on so many different vet websites, but that doesn't tell me if you know anything about hamsters. So I went ahead and I just tried to find like the most recommended exotic vet and I did go ahead and make an appointment for a second opinion for both of the hamsters. It is not until Friday, so unfortunately I can't give you that update now. But I also am going to decide on Wednesday whether or not I'm going to call and not take Penny. If Penny's hair growth is a lot better, then it was just me being dramatic and I don't see a point in trying to stress him out and go to the vet. And I pray that this vet that looks at them is at least like somewhat knowledgeable i'm not asking for a miracle i just like a vet that is gonna know a little bit about hamsters you don't need to know everything you just like a little bit is all i'm asking and that's pretty much where i'm at right now i've been extremely just like stressed and exhausted and tired even though i've been on a break <laughs> which sucks because breaks are supposed to be like little vacations and it's not really been a vacation. I just wanted to say that I am so grateful to be in the community that I am. I appreciate all of you so, so much. You guys are so supportive and it has been a really scary time taking this break, but 
If you stuck around and listened to this video, just know that I really appreciate you and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye.